deploy an application to Calyx using Jenkins. Before you deploy an application, you have to get all of your infrastructure in place first. What if you didn't have any infrastructure at all? This is where Platform as a Service comes in. In this video, we're going to look at a way to deploy your application using Jenkins to Calyx. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.332.3, and attached to this controller, I have a Linux-based agent that has the Calyx CLI installed on it. Down in the description of this video is a link to a gist that has links to all of the documentation and also the Jenkins file that we create. So let's go over to the Calyx site, which is at calyx.io. And we can see here, high performance microservices and APIs with no operations required. Let's go over to our developer tab, click on documentation, and then let's go over to setting up. First thing that we're gonna need to do is install the CLI. Now, in my case, I have already installed the CLI on my local machine, and I'm currently running version 2.0.1. You have to register for a Calyx account. I've also already gone through this, and this is the console. I have an empty console, no projects set up. And then finally, we do a quick start, which is where we're gonna be spending most of our time. So install the CLI, set up an account, and then let's do a quick start. Now in this video, we're not creating our own code. We're gonna be using code that they provide within one of their quick starts. We're gonna be using this pre-built example for running one of these samples. And we're gonna be picking the shopping cart example 002. So to get started, let's go back over to our CLI and let's create a project. And we're gonna say Calyx Projects New. We're gonna give it an ID for the project. We're gonna give it a full description, my Calyx project, and what region that we want to run it in. We hit enter and it comes back and gives us an ID. And it also sets up the project right now within the context of this shell for what the current active project is. So in my case, I'm going to copy this ID because we're gonna need it again in a few moments. Next up, since we're gonna be running these commands from our Jenkins pipeline, we're going to need some sort of authentication token. Right now, I have an auth token that I've already gone in and logged in on my local machine, but I'm not gonna have that same ability over on my agent. Think of it this way. I've just got a machine that's going to connect up, do the things, and disconnect. In that case, I'm not a human doing the work, I'm a machine doing the work, so I need an authentication token. So to create the token, I'm gonna to run Calyx auth tokens create, give it a type of refresh, scopes equals all. The scope is very important. There's four different scopes. The scope that we want to use is all. And we're giving it a description of Jenkins dash token. You could give it a real name without the dashes. I'm just choosing Jenkins dash token. I'm gonna to go ahead and hit enter. And now it generates a token for me. So I'm going to copy this token and stick it off to the side as well. Now, as we've already mentioned, we're not gonna be writing our own code. We're going to be deploying one of these example applications that already exists here. So let's go back over to our controller and let's set up a couple of things. First thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and create a credential for our token that we just created. So we'll go to manage credentials, click on global, click on add credentials, Let's change this to secret text. Let me go grab my token value. We'll paste that in. And we're going to give it the ID of calyx-token. Same for the description. So let's go ahead and start creating our Jenkins file that we need to interact with this new project that we've created. We created the project from the command line. It's now showing up within the calyx console, but we see there's no services deployed to it yet. That's okay, because we haven't deployed any. We can see life cycle events. Again, we haven't done anything yet. So all of that's going to be filling in as we go through this. Let's go ahead and go back over to our controller. Let's create a new job. I'm gonna call it Calyx Deploy. We'll start with pipeline. And again, this final Jenkins file will be over in the gist. So if you don't get it all right now, click on the link in the description and you'll see the full Jenkins file over in that gist. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll start out with hello world just to get cleaned up and going. First off, let's go ahead and just type version. And let's make sure that the Calyx version matches on our agent. We'll just do version, nice and simple. Click on build now. We take a look at the output. What we see from Calyx version is 2.0.1, so it's the same version that I'm using locally on my machine. Let's go back into this Jenkins file. Let's start prepping a few more things. We know that we're going to need to use our credential that we just created the Calyx token credential. And we also know that we have a project ID that we're going to need to use, probably. You'll see it in a moment. 
And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a service within that project. That's what this image that exists right here, this samples Java value entity shopping cart 002 is. This is going to be a service. So let's go ahead and set up some environment variables for our job. We're going to set up Calyx token equals credentials Calyx dash token. Now, this Calyx token and this Calyx project are important variable names. These variable names are known to the Calyx CLI. If you were to go over and take a look in the Calyx documentation, you would see documentation for Calyx token and Calyx project. So we're just setting these values up so we can use them later on in the pipeline. I'm also setting up a variable name. Notice I'm not using Calyx at the front. I'm trying to stay out of the Calyx namespace. And I'm just saying service name, just a generic service name. And I'm setting it to shopping cart. Why shopping cart? Well, if we go back to our example, we can see here that our example is shopping cart. So I'm just using shopping cart. You can name it anything you want. So let's go ahead and add in a few stages here. Now I've prepped this earlier, so I just copy and pasted it in. And let's walk through each of these little steps. So what we can see here, let me scroll down here to get more on screen. We have our environment, our Calyx version. We're doing a logout. And the reason why I'm doing this logout is the agent that I'm using is a static agent. So between runs, once a token has been set up, that token just stays there. So if I change the value of the Calyx token within Manage Credentials, it would not be picked up until I did a logout. So just for process, what I'm doing is I'm going to assume that the agent I'm using has been used before and I want to go ahead and get a very fresh credential. So I'm forcing a logout. So I'm saying Calyx auth logout. Next up, I'm going to set the token. So I'm saying Calyx config set refresh token to Calyx token. That's the environment variable that we just set up. Next up, we're setting the project and we're saying Calyx config set project Calyx project. Again, the environment variable for what we set up. Now, notice this Calyx project. This is the project ID and not the project name. The project name is my Calyx project. The project if you want to call it short name is my Calyx project with dashes. But what we need to pass in is the project ID, which is the 4D0 value. So Calyx project map back to 4D0, no problem. And then finally, what we're going to do is we're going to do a deploy of that image. So we're going to say Calyx services deploy service name, which we've defined up here as shopping cart. And you'll understand a little bit later why I defined it as an environment variable. And then we specify the image, which in this case happens to be on GCR. So let's go ahead and save this, and then let's click on Build Now. And what we can see here, it actually runs really fast. We do a logout, it says logged out. We set our refresh token, we set our project, and then we run Calyx Services Deploy Shopping Cart with the image. And then it says the service shopping cart was successfully deployed. Let's go over to our console and look at what's changed. We'll click into the project, and now we can see the services shopping cart. And if we scroll down into the system lifecycle events, we can see that right now the shopping cart image is being turned into a container within a pod. And then it takes a few moments for it to start up. But let's imagine for a moment that we want to be able to access this service from the outside world. At this point, there is no route to this service. So how do we set up a route for a service? Let's go back over to our Jenkins file and let's add in a few stages to handle exposing that route. We'll go to configure. And again, this final Jenkins file is going to be over in the gist. Let's go ahead and paste in what we have. So let's go back to where we deployed our service, pretty straightforward. And then we're going to wait until it's actually fully deployed. You noticed when we were going through our project that is showing unavailable right now. It's because it's going through and deploying, and this takes a few moments. It's not instantaneous. Even though from our previous run, it said it's been deployed, well, it's actually been scheduled to be deployed. So we need to wait for time in order for this to be ready before we actually expose the route. We can't expose a route to something that is not ready to be exposed. Sort of makes sense, right? So let's go back over and take a look at what we're doing. What we're going to do is we're going to set a timeout for five minutes. So we're going to give it five minutes to deploy. And within the timeout, we're going to say, wait until. And the maximum that you can set this to is 15 seconds. So I had 30, let's set it to 15. And this is in milliseconds, so it's 15,000. If you don't set an initial recurrence period, it starts doing a back off. But 
I know it's going to take some time, so I'm just going to say check every 15 seconds. If it's ready, great. If it's not, great. We'll loop around until it is ready. Now, how do I determine ready? Well, what I'm doing is I am going to run Calix service, as I scroll right, list. And I'm checking for my service name, shopping cart, and then I'm going to check for ready. So in this case, until Calix services list returns shopping cart ready, I'm just going to stay in this loop up to, in my case, five minutes, which is the timeout that I've set right here at the beginning of this loop. And I'm checking return equals zero. So Calix services list is going to return a status code of one. I really want it to be a zero. I want it to be successful. So I'm just going to sit here and loop for up to five minutes. Once that has completed, I'm being a little conservative. I'm giving it a little bit more breathing room. So I'm going to give it an extra five seconds. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run Calix routes get the service name, in our case, shopping cart. Why am I doing this? If a route already exists, you can't create a route again. So what I'm doing here is on exposing, if the route already exists, so I'm saying return status true, if it's found, that's what the one is, then it skips the stage. However, if it's zero, it doesn't exist because Calix routes get for a non-existent route is a status code of zero, success, that means I'm ready to expose the service and create the route. That's what we're doing here, Calix services expose in the service name. The reason why I created the service name environment variable was to not have to paste that around because if I wanted to change it, I would have to go through this pipeline and find shopping cart everywhere and change it to whatever it was. I knew that I was gonna be using service name consistently throughout this Jenkins file, so that's why I created it as an environment variable. Okay, let's go ahead and click on save. And let's go back over to our console and we can see shopping cart is now ready. So all the time we were explaining there, we were giving this time to go ahead and start up and be ready. Let's go ahead and go back over to our pipeline and let's run this one more time. Now we're not changing the value of the image. It's still gonna be 002, but what we're gonna do now is we're going to expose the route. So if we click into shopping cart, and we take a look at routes. Right now, there are no routes exposed. So let's click on build now. And let's take a look at the output of three. So logged out, set up our tokens, and now we're in this five minute timeout checking every 15 seconds for the route to be exposed. However, since the service was already running, since the numbers were all the same, it found a ready, then it slept for five seconds. It did not find a shopping cart route. This is in our win condition. And then it exposed the shopping cart route. And it also gives us what the endpoint is. So if we were to go back over to our console, we're now going to see softbar 7407, and now I could access this and create a cart. Let's try that out. So let's go back over to our shell. And I've pasted it in a curl line where we're gonna be posting an empty JSON body to this endpoint. And if you go through the documentation for this Calyx example, you'll find these endpoints. So we're just saying initialize the cart. When we hit enter, give it a second, now we get a card ID back of 9D5, whatever the card ID is. Now we've proven that we can deploy a service into Calyx, expose the route, and then finally interact with that route using curl. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next video.